Shavuot. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodesh. With all honors to the elders and the apostles of Green Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right. Um, I was reading here in the book of Second uh, Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. All right, and so uh, Lord willing, I want to do a um, quick exhortation video. All right, dealing with um, a statement that was made to Paul. All right, from the Lord. Okay, which is mainly in verse nine, but I'll start at verse six. All right, and um, basically the statement was, uh, as the Lord told Paul, "My grace is sufficient for thee." Okay, and um, reason being is that, you know, in of course in our all of our individual journeys in this truth, all right, and in life, you know, there's either things, problems that we've been facing, you know, for a long time, or problems that just sort of come into your life, all right, and, you know, certain things, they're just so troublesome, it's burdensome, you know, and the Lord, you know, keeps it there for a reason, you know, sometimes you might go through something as a punishment, sometimes you might go through something uh, as an abasement, so the Lord can exalt you, you know, as chastisement, and sometimes, um, you know, the Lord may just put something there as a means of uh, keeping you humble. Okay, now in the flesh, it may not feel, you know, good as Paul, you know, Paul went through. Okay, however, that was actually, you know, going to be for the greater good. All right. And in this instance of Paul, because it would keep him humble. All right. And that humility would also keep him on the right track. All right. Now, it's lucky about my voice. You know, I sound a little different uh, having a little uh, tooth issue. So, um, yeah, pardon that. OK, but. Um, so Second uh, Corinthians, chapter 12, verse six, it says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. OK, because when you as as I believe it mentioned elsewhere that, you know, what what do we really have to glory in? You know, what do we have to boast in seeing as faith and the knowledge and the wisdom and all of these things are a gift from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We didn't give it to ourselves. We didn't wake ourselves up. All right. So what, what you know, what I'm saying, what do we really have to glory in? All right. And that's why when you jump to verse 11, it says, I am become a fool in glorying. So that's why he says here, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool because if, if you know, I will become a fool in glorying. All right. Um, so finishing back in verse six, it says, for I will say the truth. All right. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that he heareth of me. OK. And um, reason being as well is because when you when you go into, uh, uh, you know, because this is the book of Second Corinthians, when you go into First Corinthians, the Corinthians, Paul was basically getting on them. All right, because they were uh, uh, basically uh, uh, men worshiping, you know, sects. All right, there were there were you know divisions and sects, and as a matter of fact, let's just go to it. All right, First Corinthians chapter three, uh, verse one. All right, it says, and I and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto carnal, but as on salakia, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Hamashiach. All right. It says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. And I mean, that's that's how you do it. You know, especially like even if you have uh, somebody that's new to the truth, you know, you don't just straight you throw the you know deep breakdowns, you know, at them. No. All right. You start off with the milk, the basics. All right. Their nationality, the name of the Lord, you know, breaking down the milk to them. And over time, as they grow. All right. You know, they'll do they'll, they'll get more and more understanding because see some of the deeper uh, mysteries of the scriptures you need to understand the basics so that when you read those precepts you're able to back it up with other precepts because a lot of the uh the deep breakdowns all right when you break them down you use milk or basic precepts to prove and break down those those more uh you know more mis uh uh, uh uh, harder breakdowns, you know, you use other basic breakdowns to uh, support or break down the harder breakdown. So if you don't know the basic breakdowns, if you don't know the milk, all right, you won't understand the deeper uh, uh, parts of the scriptures. So that's why Paul told him that he, 
he could not speak unto them as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Hamashiach. But I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye able. So I fed you with milk and with meat because before now you weren't able to bear the meat. And even now you're not able to handle it. Verse 3, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? See, because th these are not fruits of the spirit. You know, the envying and the strife and the this and the that. And, you know, here we're supposed to be one body and Yahweh and you, you know what I'm saying, you're you having divisions over carnal reasons. All right. Verse four says, for while one saith I am of Paul, see, and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but the Most High gave the increase. So then neither is it he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but the Most High giveth the increase. See, so, you know, going back to 1 Corinthians 3, like I just read, you had uh, uh, the Corinthians that were, you know, they were being carnal, you know. Because when you're saying I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, you're 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 bigging them up as if you know they're you know these uh, uh of course you know they they were they were lifted up in the spirit. However, Paul was basically letting them know it's not about me or Apollos. All right, we're just we're just uh, servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know you can't be divided in saying well I, I'm I'm of Paul and this person I'm of Apollos like. Did I go on the cross for you? You know, am I the one who woke, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I the one who died for your sins? You know, we all serve in Yahweh Shai. So that's why, you know, in another statement, Paul said, Be ye followers of me, even as I am, all right, of Hamashiach. Now, I believe I was in uh, the 11th chapter, uh, 12. It's a lot, you me. All right. So going back to 2 Corinthians 12. Uh, so that's why Paul says here, um, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool for I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth, uh, he seeth me to be or that he heareth of me and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. All right. Cause you know, as, as we read in the book of Acts, you know, the Lord taught Paul. So there were a lot of things that were revealed to Paul, which put him on a high level in the spirit. Okay. But as, uh, because of that, okay. And to balance it out, it says here, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. All right. Meaning, meaning uh, uh, an infirmity, you know, something that Paul couldn't get rid of. Okay. It says the messenger of Satan, a demon to buffet me. All right, to plague him, lest I should be exalted above measure. So you got to understand all your, you know, certain ailments you have, you know, they come and they go away. Right. And you have other ones that are just they're continuously there. You know, every now and then, you know, it, it, it gets worse or, you know, something. And you remember, all right, that you still have this ailment or whatever this symptom is and it just won't leave. And it's, 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 it's troublesome, you know, it's, it's, it's stressful, all right, and it's uncomfortable in the flesh, okay? But as Paul said, he was given one of these, and, and those symptoms come by demons, all right? When you get sick, it's really a demon that's plaguing you, because when you read in the scriptures, how did the Lord heal a lot of these sick people by casting out demons off of them? It was the demons that were making them sick, okay? So... Paul, the Lord basically sent a demon to, to buffet Paul to keep him humble. All right. That's why he said through the abundance of the revelation. So he, he was given a lot of knowledge, but so that it wouldn't go to his head, he had to be, you know, given that thorn in his flesh. All right. That he can con have a constant reminder that though you may know all this, that and the third, you're still at a subject to me. You're still at my mercy because guess what? 
you know this down the third and people may look at you as like this this top dude but guess what at the end of the day you can't even rid yourself of that that thorn and, and it must be extremely uncomfortable because it'll humble your ass you know you forget you for you'll forget whatever you know how how much you may know you know when when that when them demons start messing with you hardcore you know you humble down quick because when you're going through it you know you want it to stop you know you want the lord to you know to 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 make it stop you know you don't you don't say oh i, I know i know you know what i'm saying i know all these deep breakdowns you don't that's not what you think about when you're catching hell that's not what you think about when you're catching hell you're thinking about the lord you begging the lord you beseeching the lord and you you praying for mercy you know and that puts you in a humble state okay uh, an example being Antiochus Epiphanes. When you look at the way he died, he was humbled. Now, he, when on his deathbed, was he thinking about how great he was? No. Was he thinking about how all the the, the lands he had conquered? And no, no. He was thinking about, oh Lord, I I'll do anything for you to you know cure me of this plague because it humbles you, man. Pain, uncomfortability especially ones that you have no control over, they humble you. So that was the point. All right. And it says here, for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it may depart from me. So you can tell that whatever it was that was bothering Paul, that infirmity, it, it was, it was, it was extremely, you know, it was messing with him to the point where he, he sought the Lord three times. All right. Three times. Now, did Paul turn around and lose faith? Because the Lord didn't hear, you know, not didn't hear, but didn't uh, uh, rid him of that infirmity, of that thorn. He said, oh, Lord, here it is. I'm doing all, all these works for you, but you got me in all this pain. Uh, that's it. I'm done. I, I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> you know, Lord, if you don't heal me right now, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing this no more. No. All right. And this is what the Lord told him. Verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee all right my grace is sufficient for thee so you're going through all of this but with my grace you're going to be able to handle it it's, it's enough it's enough for you all right and that's what we also got to remember is that regardless of everything that we may be going through uncomfortable or comfortable what we we still have one thing all right which can suffice or hold us through it all, which is this truth, this knowledge, this wisdom, and this understanding, and this faith, all right? That is sufficient to carry you through whatever kind of infirmity you may be in, whatever kind of condition you may be in. Because with the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you can get through it. That's why it's sufficient, okay? It's enough, all right, for you to keep on going, all right? It says, uh, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Okay? Because how does the Lord flex his strength? You know? He comes when you when you're in a position of difficulty, in a position of straight, uh straits. And that's how the the Lord gets magnified. Alright? For example, the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt. When when we when we uh, were slaves in Egypt, we were weak. All right. And that's how the Lord magnified his strength through our weakness, because if we were strong and mighty and we took down the Egyptians ourselves, where would the Lord's strength be magnified? All right. How would it be made perfect? He had to subject us, make us weak so that he could perfect his strength through our weakness. All right. Uh, uh, when we were when we were at the Gulf of Suez, you know, and the Egyptians were, were closing in on us. We were weak, but it was through that weakness, through where it looked like there was there was no way out, that the Lord perfected his strength by delivering us, okay? So when you're weak, all right, is when, is, that's when, when those prayers get answered, man, I mean, the thanks, imagine, imagine you pray to the Lord, but you're already good, you know, and then he answers your prayer. Of course, you're going to thank the Lord, but, you know, it won't be on the same level as if you're in some dire straits there's no way out you can do nothing about it you know literally the only way is to call the lord and he answers your prayer 
that level of relief, gratitude, you know, all of that, that is, is, is for the Lord is perfected in that moment. Okay. Because you see, you see the true strength and the reason why you need to depend on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because there's no way out. All right. If there was another alternative, then it, then the Lord's help wouldn't be as uh, um, uh, desired. Not even desired, but you know, as 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 I don't even I'm I'm you know losing words right now. But the Lord's strength wouldn't be as like as as you know magnified as it is because you're like, oh well, I could just do this. And if the Lord won't help me, I just, I could just do this alternative. But when you're weak to the point where there's no way out except the Lord, that's when you, you know, you truly see that. All right, it says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, right, that the power of Hamashiach may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in, in infirmities. And that's not an easy thing. All right. You got to you got to you got to be really strong mentally to be able to do that. It says, um, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Hamashiach's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. All right. And that was pretty much the point there. Always remember, all right, that so long as you have the grace and mercy of your Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, it is sufficient for thee. It doesn't matter how bad the situation you're in is. So long, you, you can lose everything. But if you have the Lord, you're good. You really have everything. All right. But if you lose the Lord, it doesn't matter what you gain. You, you're, you're done. Whatever you gain will not be sufficient for you uh, uh, to survive a life without the Lord. However, the opposite. All right. If, if you if you whatever, if you have the Lord and you lose everything in this world, guess what? Having the Lord alone will be sufficient for you. All right. So with that, you know, Lord willing, I was exhorting and edifying unto the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash. All right, and this shows you how, you know, why you got to appreciate and be thankful, all right, to be in this truth, to have this knowledge, man. All right, because not only is it only given to a select few, okay, but it is, it is, you know, it's a very valuable thing, man. Romans 11 and 33, all right, the depths of the riches. Of the knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Alright, so with that, Shalom.